Hey guys, so I'm back here and I'm going to do a final tour this time because the last time I did the tour, there are things I left out and there are things I added uh, after the fact. So this time you're going to get a full tour of everything, all the improvements I made and the things I left out on the last tour. So let's get going. All right, guys, so we're going to start with the back. And, of course, this is the storage area. You know, what, if you're carrying a lot of gear when you're camping, you know, it's not always nice and neat like this, of course. But, you know, you just kind of load everything up. And you load it up in my, my storage area. This is my bathtub storage area. And you can put a bunch of stuff right here, and you'll be fine. It's not going anywhere. Um, but so when you come back here, you can see I already... There are things that I do have storage that's here all the time. I'll show you all this stuff in a little bit, but first we're going to talk about the pullout. And the pullout goes out like this. And you can see it's, it's a double burner kitchen. So right here on the door handle I have this handy cup holder and this bottle opener. So you need the bottle opener and you need the cup holder. All right, so this is my double burner kitchen and uh, if I don't want to put the legs I, I actually could rest it on the bed over there just like that you can see there's two burners I have my spice rack and you, you got the spatulas you know can openers bowls pots pans more pots more pans everything you need um, so I basically built all the dividers around everything that I had. So it's not like I, I built the dividers and found stuff that fits. I, I, I started off with the stuff and I built around so I made sure it fits. If you do want to uh, uh, legs on the drawer, you can. Okay, so I got this wing nut and, I'm, and you just slide it right in like that. And it locks nice and tight on this side, same thing. Yes, these bolts are long, but it's what I had in my drawer. On this second one, I'm using a smaller wing nut because the big one gets in the way. So now, what you can do is, you can fully extend it. So now, things are a little bit further away from, um, you know, the van and what you're doing. And in this swing out mode, the nice thing about it is I have this sink, and with that, I can swing out the sink. I'll just put the faucet right there. So if you're cooking out here, you can always access your sink. You don't have to reach inside there. And, of course, the water will work out here just like it works in there. Let's put this back for now. All right, we'll put that up for now. And... When we're here in um, the kitchen mode, what I like to do, grab my paper towel and I'll keep it in this guy right here so that I have easy access to paper towels. Now, uh, you could cook back here, of course, which is fine, but sometimes there's a nice uh, camping bench or something like that. You want to bring all your stuff, so you could do that too. Let me show you how to do that. Okay, so what you can do is, this is light enough that you could just take the whole thing with you wherever you want to go, and you have your whole kitchen gear with you. Everything's there. All right, let's slide this back in. And it tucks away neatly like that. Forgot the legs. Get that back in. Okay, so over here I have my water bucket and you can see the water feeds to this uh, faucet right here. This is a USB powered faucet. It works great. It's basically a water dispenser uh, for, for a water bottle. But if you wanna go and, um, and cook and camp at the picnic table, you could easily just use this guy and that'll, go with you where you want to go too. So I have two options. If I want to dispense water when I'm by the car or when I'm nowhere near the car, I could still get it. All right, so here I got a rechargeable flashlight. This thing's very powerful. Um, it also works as a, as a lantern, um, but I'm gonna show you that later tonight when I show you the lights. So we're gonna put this away for now and we'll go back to it. Uh, this is really handy, this is an inflator. It, it also works great as something to stoke the flame when you got a campfire. Very handy little device. 
And over here, I got my, my inflatable bed, just in case I need an extra inflatable bed. If I want to sleep two people individually, one person could sleep on the ground, and the other one could sleep over here. No problem. And th that inflator will take care of the inflatable bed, too. Got two camping chairs. These are really compact and lightweight. They work really nicely. And I got my my tripod lights, and I'll show you that later at night time. We'll come back, and you'll see it all. Over here, what I have here, believe it or not, is a toilet. So, of course, in the bathroom area, you can't have a bathroom area without a toilet. It comes with these walls. Put it down. Just slide it in there. And there you go. You could uh, do what you got to do. And of course, you know, there's there's bags if you need it. Hopefully, I will never need it. This is brand new. I've never used it before in my life. I never plan to. But it's just there. This goes over here. That goes like that. So, uh, you know, if you do need it, you know, here's some kitty litter. You know how to do that. I'm not going to demo that. And if you need to, you could do this. And if you do need to use that, uh, you might need this right here uh, to have something soft to kneel down on. All right, so we're going to continue um, looking at my bathroom area. Oops, let me take this out since we're no longer in cooking mode. Put that back down. Take this chair. So this is a very nice handy chair. So uh, you can sit here and get ready in the morning. You know, you have your sink and you have a mirror over here. Check it out. I want to show you what I did here. On the other side of this mirror is the tiniest medicine cabinet you will ever see. So it's made from basically a, a box. You could use a cigar box, but it's just a generic wood box. And I made it into a medicine cabinet. So that works great. Um, I even, my wife gave me an electric toothbrush to use, and I use that too. Uh, there's a battery. So I have fresh batteries all the time, and this is tied into the car. It's plugged into the car, so every time I'm driving, uh, I'm recharging these batteries. All right, so here in the sink, you can see I have a strainer on the inside. So, you know, you could wash your, your cups and spoons and whatnot. Just turn it upside down, let it dry out. Of course, no bathroom is complete without an actual bath. So let me show you the bath that I have. Oh, this is a table. It folds out into a table, but let's take a look at the bath. So the reason I put everything in a, in a basket like this is so that I could remove it very quickly. Let's take a look at the bath. So here is a bath basin, and this is made with uh, waterproof vinyl planks. Uh, so what I have over here, this is for my outdoor shower, I'm going to show you that later, is the curtains. So as you can see, uh, you could you could take a bath sitting down right here, and for the shower water, I have this dispenser right here. This is a rechargeable Sun Joe water sprayer, and basically it's it's just a sprayer for fertilizer or for um, pesticides or anything like that. So here is the the shower wall for the inside. I'll show you that in a second, but basically, you know, you could see. I don't want to get wet, but there's plenty of water pressure, and all the and all the water comes down here, and it'll never get your car wet. So let's take a look at the inside with the sidewall up. Okay, so from this side, uh, this this curtain is actually really easy. I just have some Velcro, and you can see there's already a Velcro strip right there. So you can see when everything's pulled, it is a contained system and you're going to be able to take a pretty comfortable shower. And you know, there's, there's a decent amount of room here. You know, I, I'm 5'8", 175-ish, uh, 
Um, so if you're about that size, you're going to fit fine. And of course, you just do the exact opposite when you want to clean up the shower. Just fold everything up. All right, so you saw the indoor shower and the indoor bathroom. So let's take a look at the outdoor shower. And for that, I'll need this. Okay, so for the outdoor shower, I have this. And I have this fence posting, this vinyl fence post that I made the water reservoir out of. Uh, here's the air release valve. So open up the air, click that in. And this is a gravity-fed system. So you just turn it. Let me get out of the way. So there you have, we have a gravity-fed water system. You could just take a shower here. There's a decent amount of water pressure, and you don't have to use any kind of power source to make this go. So that works great, and that's all up there. So here I have my junk area where I got some tools and things like that. So, uh, But in addition, I have this, and this uses that same quick connect as the outdoor shower so I could just connect it there and what I can do is I could take this and refill my water supply using the water out there so you know that's another really cool advantage of having a, a water container outside that you could easily access so that you could uh, fill out your water tanks inside so you're not using all the space inside the van uh, for water storage. So let's put this away and let's go back up top. So up here I have a solar panel. It's 110 watts and I have a little latches for it right here that locks and unlocks. And let me show you what it looks like when I want to angle it so that I could have... Um, a more opti optimal angle with the sun. I could do something like this. So it, it, it works as for, um, an option for me to catch more sun, but also a cover for my rack. So let me show you inside the rack. So that's what it looks like if you want to catch the last bit of sunshine. Okay, so here in the rack, what I have is this uh, underbed storage tub. And what you can do is you can put um, some of the, your bigger, bulkier items, like big jackets and things like that. I got a couple of hammocks here and my my waders, my fishing waders. Uh, just big, big, bulky items that you don't want to keep in the car, that you don't always need to get access to. So that, that actually works really nice. And this is a under bed, like a sweater tub or something like that. And it fits perfect inside the rack. So you may have noticed these lights here on the rack too. And these lights, I'll show you later at night again, uh, that they will swivel like this and it's a, a light for your campsite or when you're setting up or anything like that. But I'll show you that later at night when, uh, when things are darker. All right, so next up is the cockpit area. Right here at my feet, I have a little handy little device and I just yanked that out, but it's a glass breaker with a glass cutter. So I, I did a video to demo this, but that, that actually works out really well, surprisingly well for such a little thing. And you can see right off the bat, I removed the center console of the Sienna and I replaced it with this refrigerator. And I basically got the biggest refrigerator that will fit here nicely. And you can see it also works as a cup holder, um, opens up like that. So it's a, all right. So here you open it up, and there's this battery pack too. So I could actually run the refrigerator at the campsite for roughly around six hours or so with this battery pack that that uh, is optional for this refrigerator, and that works out great. So over here, I still have some storage area, uh, even though I took out the center console. I do have some storage area. Um, I did. Uh, this car doesn't come with CarPlay. It has an old navigation that's not so good. So I have a, nav a CarPlay screen right here. And, you know, my wires are dangling. But you just plug in your phone or you could go wireless. It works great. All right, so here's, here's the CarPlay system. Uh, I can't actually sync it right now because I'm using my phone to do this video. But next up, I have a sunroof here. And this is handy because... I'm able to use this fly screen. Let me show you what that looks like. 
So on a hot day, I could open up the sunroof, put on the fly screen, and turn on my vent fans, which I have right over here. What you could actually do that works out nicely is you clip one right here and you have the fan, the wind blowing out. And then you have the other fan circulating air inside the van. So it, you could actually make the van pretty cool on a hot day. Let me show you the other fan. So here I have the other fan. And again, I, I could clip it just about anywhere I want. Let's just say for right here for right now. And I could get a cross circulation blown out and uh, the mosquitoes can't get in. So that, that actually works out very well with these little USB fans. Very handy. And I just clip them right here. Okay, so if you see this backpack here, it's offset for a reason. And the reason is I could take the chair in and out and it'll still slide, you know, and sit on top of my bed. And that's why it's not here in the middle. And Because if it was, I would lose some. Uh, it, it'll stop right here and I'll be stuck. But anyway, so that's why it's offset like that. So coming in here, before I even open up my bed, I want to show you what's here underneath my floors. And I have secret compartments. So first secret compartment is right here. And you can see this just slides up. And uh, I have nothing but a t-shirt in here right now. But I just wanted to show you what size items can fit in here. Uh, you could put whatever you want. And uh, you could take this and slide it back. And it goes back over there. In addition... I have this secret compartment here and you can see this is where I keep all my wires and all the gadgets and stuff like that. See, I have my wires, all the USB cables and things like that. I got my toolbox, extra toothbrushes, trash bags, things like that. So you can see I, I still have room for a, a few more things. Uh, in addition there's also another little spot right here flashlight, fuel, uh, burner, camping burner, and that just goes there. So uh, I didn't want to waste any of the storage space down here because I had to elevate uh, the floor so that the, the sienna would be level. But once you elevate it, uh, you're going to lose some space unless you use it the way I did. So I was able to, to use some space and make some secret storage. What I have right here is a college dorm size laundry basket. So what I do is I keep this to throw in dirty clothes. So it's just clipped on to the back of the chair, but it works great as a place to put dirty clothes. And uh, for clean clothes, I got a drawer right here. And over here, there's also another area that you could use to store some clothes right here underneath the microwave. Uh, there's some storage you could use whatever you, this for whatever you want but you could use it for some closed storage also if you like all right so over here uh, you already saw my fans and it's clipped up here I got a, a jacket hook right there but I also use it as my cap um, I have a grill uh, if, if I don't want to use a burner I could use electricity it's a waffle maker grill so it, it actually works pretty well think of it as like a small George Foreman grill or something like that I got my fireplace right here I'll show you that later at night and one of my favorite things is my rice cooker this is a, a very cool little rice cooker and it does a great job microwave you know what that is never seen a microwave before so over here i got a coffee maker and that coffee maker i got the cup right here that works fantastic um, and some extra storage down here so this is where i like to keep my water bottles you know it stays upright and it fits very well for you know clean water bottles not not bath water or anything like that i made these drawers over here and you know this is like my junk drawer and I, I took some viewer uh, advice and put magnets on it, but I, I left my, my locks on it too. So if you're on a particularly bumpy road, maybe you want to lock it a little bit more or whatnot. But it's basically just plastic drawers that I mounted up, so I didn't have to do a frame or anything. That works great. Um, over here I have a, a switch light just like this right here. So if you if you need a quick light, you know, you don't want to be bumbling around for the for the 
the remote and trying to find the right button or anything like that. You know, you just want to flip the switch. So that's really handy. Uh, here is one of my favorite things is my my pantry that I built here. So this this little recessed window thing works out perfectly. I use that space. Storing a lot of stuff, canned stuff back here. You can take a look back there and this quite a bit of room and I have quite a bit of junk and I'm not real organized but that's the way it looks. I got my carbon monoxide detector that light switch in a uh, temperature thing that is out of batteries so you don't get to see it today. Um, so right here what I did was uh, I hung a little mesh basket here so that I could have some extra space and I didn't want to build a cabinet here because I wanted to have you know free free movement with my legs moving around over here so this actually worked out great because it keeps everything elevated there's a couple of towels in there for right now okay so in addition to there being plenty of room here for me to eat or uh, make some coffee make some food I have some additional space over here if I want some extra desk space to, or table space to put some items, I could even cook right here. The nice thing about cooking right here is that I could crack the window open and use a fan and blow everything out. So this is a real nice place, spot to cook if you want to uh, cook something small. Okay, so next up, you know, I, space storage is a premium. So I didn't even want to waste the space between these legs. So I put in this mesh net to store things and it turns out it is great to store your hiking shoes. So it fits right in underneath that gap. And the nice thing about using the mesh is that because it's attached to the legs, when I open up the bed, it's gonna come out with the bed. So I'll show you the bed next. All right, so to open up the bed, what you wanna do is you just wanna pull this out. And after you pull it out, you click this, it releases, and it opens up. And you can see, it is a nice size bed and not only that the reason why i spent so much effort in elevating this storage here was because i wanted to be able to slide in and out while i'm still here while the bed is still open so a lot of builds you know once you open up the bed you can't do anything you just could only sleep and you have to roll around but here you're able to move around slide in and out no problem and you can see it, it's a normal twin size bed it will fit two people and let me show you why it'll fit two come on over here i have a little trick over here i have this little wing here that's flush with the bed and the neat thing about that is that the second person can sleep right on the edge and still be even so that they could just put their arm right here so you can see there's a lot of space right here so that's why it's a couple's camper. You can sleep two people pretty easily, even though it's a normal twin size bed, you can sleep two, especially with that wing out. So let's put everything back up. So if you want to close the bed from this side, you can actually do that too. And in, in many ways, it's actually easier to do it from this side. Lock it in. And pull it back and your, your back is uh, up and ready to go. The reason why it's easier to pull it back here is just you have more space than when you're inside the car. But when you look down here, remember that closed drawer I had? You see, it opens up on both sides. So if you have some items of clothes, clothes that you want to access from the outside, this is a good place to put it. I also leveraged a little bit of storage here underneath that platform. Uh, you know, air pump, walkie talkies, flashlights, uh, camping stoves and things like that so it, it fits quite a bit of stuff as you can see and, you know, and over here this of course that comes with the car but got my my horn to scare off the bears hydrogen peroxide safety kit umbrella all the normal stuff so let's go take a look at the power system all right so with my power first of all i have these ports here and this is a switched port from my um my inverter i'll show you that in a second but these right here is usb and um, cigarette lighter accessory my rice cooker uses this and you know everything uses usb and it lights up so you know it's on and there's also a switch to turn it off too and again this is controlled by this inverter right over here take a look at that 
So this is a, a pure sine wave inverter. That's very important if you want to run a microwave. Uh, microwaves do not like modified uh, sine wave inverters. I know they're cheaper, but I'm a cheap guy and I had to go with the pure sine wave myself, okay? So get the pure sine wave. This is 1500. This microwave is roughly 750 watts, I think, something like that. But let's come around outside and I'll show you my big battery. All right, so on the other side of this curtain, so, so to speak, is my big battery. And you see, I put it right underneath uh, all my cabinets and stuff, and I made it so you could pull it out. So if I need to service the battery for whatever reason, I could just pull it out, okay? So it's nice and easy. This is a 100 um, milliamp battery, lithium ion phosphate. It's working fantastic. And you can see I have my routing that comes down to my inverter. my inverter right here and here is my charge controller that controls the solar panels that you saw earlier and coming around here let me show you I have some switches that I made too so here I made this switch so that I could control if I want to charge my lithium-ion battery by alternator or I could go by solar or I could just turn it to the off position where nothing's charging but for the most part I put it on the solar charge but in addition my car battery can be charged through the solar and I have the light turning on so that I know it's not good to turn on your engine while uh, the, the solar panels are hooked up so this tells me my car batteries are hooked up to the solar right now and that's off and over here fridge I have a switch for my lithium ion and the car accessory so I could control the refrigerator through this switch also. You already saw the curtain, so let's pull the privacy curtains. This one's real easy, so let's come around the inside. Okay, so I have curtains all the way around, and they are privacy curtains. They're not stealth curtains. So if you want stealth, I, I do have my old stealth setup with uh, uh, these Reflectex things. Uh, they're, they're actually quite inconvenient when you don't want to be in stealth mode, and you just, you just want to have some privacy. You want to pull the shades and, and open up the shades. You know, these takes effort, um, but when I do have a stealth trip, I do take along the Reflectex for full stealth. But anyways, let me show you these curtains. I have a curtain rod going across. And you can see with the curtains, it's so easy and convenient. They're good looking curtains. They're, they're house curtains. They're blackout thermal curtains, so they actually keep you warm. So if you pull all my shades, all my curtains are all thermal curtains, so uh, they, they do protect you a little bit from the cold. Over here in the side window, this one's a little bit trickier. I have this guy right here, and I use the hooks that the car came with, and you just hook it up, shove everything in, and it's gonna be fine. So let's look at the back curtains. All right, so for these back curtains, real easy, I just got a rope that holds them, and they slide like this, like that. So now, you know, you have full privacy curtains. No one's going to know you're in here unless it's night and you have the lights on. They can see the lights. But if you do need to be stealth, again, there is the Reflectex option. Um, I have tried to go stealth without the Reflectex, just shoving in things in the hole. That, that does work, but it, it's a little more effort to, you know, for stealth. This is probably the best option. So now that we're all covered up and we're in privacy mode, it's time to go to sleep. So let's come back at night and I'll show you all the lights that I have. All right, it's late enough at night. So let's take a look at some of our options to light up the campsite. Let me come up here. If you guys remember, I have these lights, these guys right here. And I have a switch and I plug these in. And let's take a look at them. So you could see it leaves quite a bright light and I could have one on each side. You can see this one's lighting up this tree. So I have those two lights, one on each side. So in addition, I told you about my tripod lights and these are basically just work lights, tri tripod work lights, but they work great for camping. Let me show you. I'm going to release them like that. And these are heavy duty. So they're very flexible in how you want to um, set them up. You could do it like this or you just turn them around. 
set them up like that. You know, whichever way you want to do. If you want to have it directional, you could just go all in one direction like that. So it's very flexible. So this is a great little light. Step back and show you how bright that is. Very bright. So it'll light up your campsite pretty well. So in addition to those, I remember I have that that rechargeable lantern light that I wanted to show you. So this, you could just keep like this, and it does a great job. But not just that, it's rechargeable. And I'll show you how bright this thing is. You can see it's lighting up my whole block pretty well. Okay, so in the car, I have these quick and easy lights. I have one here and one over here. Those are real quick and easy. But I also have this light right there that is controlled by this remote control. So if you turn these off, you can see it's still very bright and I could control um, how, if I want to dim it, that's the nice thing about this one. There we go. So I could adjust how bright I want this. So if I want just very little light, I could just adjust it accordingly. All right, so let's go inside and check out some of the other lights. So what I have over here is these USB ports that I have and a cigarette lighter port. And I'm gonna power that on. And I have um, this little thumb light right here. That's one of the two ambient lights I can use. All right, you can see, if I just plug in that, let me turn off this other light. You can see, it's pretty bright. Let me zoom out. There you go. It's pretty bright down there. But if I want a blue light, I could have that too. Let me show you that. Same type of thing. I have this little mini USB light. And there, there's a nice little blue light. And let's turn off the light. And See what that looks like. So this is really easy on the eyes if uh, you want to have this type of light. And in addition to that, I have another type of ambient that light. That will be in the form of this cheap Android pad. And of course, when I want to demo it to you, it's out of batteries. But the good news is there's a USB port right there that we could uh, run it off the cable for now. All right, we'll just run this corded right now but we'll pretend there's it's wireless and I have some velcro for it to stick right there so there is an additional ambient light so let's take a look let's turn off the lights there so this has a really nice effect let's take a look back a little bit all right well, that's the way it's gonna look so I, I really like this little fireplace setting it's I think it's pretty cool and another nice thing about uh having this Android pad in here as my fireplace is that I could use this pad and use this Velcro that I have there and I could use it as my video player. I could watch YouTube or I could watch a movie uh, sitting right back here. All right, so that's pretty much with my lights. I have this magnet for my remote that I keep right there. I could access it pretty easy. This is also um, rechargeable so that you could just take it off and the pack that I got came with three of these. So the other two are always charged. So if this one runs out, no big deal. I'll just replace it with one that's already charged. All right. So uh, now that I've given you the full tour of my Sienna Couples Camper, I, this really is my, my best build. And I did all the improvements I want to do. I think I showed you everything, but I might have left something out. But for the most part, this is it. I'm not even going to make any more improvements. This is good to go. And I'm going to get some time to finally camp in it and do some fishing. But for now, it's Miller time.